when you are preparing it, you come and measure a flat ground where you will arrange your soil. You first put your larger, your larger garden, your larger conical garden, and then you put soil. The soil is mi mixed with manure at a ratio of one to one. One will burrow of soil, one will burrow of manure, and then you mix it. We are partnering with Calro to organize this training in enhancing the utilization of climate smart agriculture technologies among smallholder, vegetable, women farmers in Kenya, and particularly we are here in Machakos. We have come a long way uh, with this farmer group. It's called the Green Shed Women Farmer Group. This is a farmer group of about 25 uh, members with 24 women and, and one man. Over the years, we have trained this farmer group to be able to use agricultural water productivity technologies. And, and this is because issues of soil health, issues of managing the soil and managing water are very key when it comes to agricultural productivity. So this time round, we have come to train these women farmers on very specific climate smart agriculture technologies that respond to the current problem that they are facing of the El Nino rains. The rains have come very strong, the wind is very strong, and they are destroying the vegetables that the farmers are growing, which are their main source of livelihood. We know that these rains have killed people, they've affected over 80,000 households in Kenya, but very specifically, the farmers are most affected and the women farmers who comprise the majority of these farmers are the, are, are the most affected. So we've come in uh, time with this training, which is very timely, to be able to ensure that even when the El Nino rains are happening, these farmers are able to apply some of the climate smart agriculture technologies that have been produced by the research institutions like Calro, and they are able to increase their productivity even amidst these challenges. Our conical garden has six layers, five layers. So in between the layers, it will, you will leave um, 10 centimeters where you will plant your crops in between. My name is Anton Musili from Biovision African Trust, a field officer. We do partner with Karo Katumani. Yeah, we are here at Greenhouse uh, Green Shed uh, Self Help Group. We have elected a shed net here. Now, why is it a shed net? Uh, because of climate smart agriculture, there came a challenge of water, challenge of our predators, challenge when the farmers were implementing the activity. So when they asked about the, uh, to address this problem, we came, uh, Asereka came up with a shed net. What is the importance of a shed net? One, it is used to address uh, uh, direct sunlight. So when you use a shed net, it avoids that direct sunlight which hits the crops which are planted there. Then what happens after reducing that heat? It also reduces wilting. Because when crops are planted directly through the sunlight, they wilt. So the shed net will help in reducing wilting. The other thing it will do, it will conserve moisture. Because there is no, not that direct sunlight, evaporation will be low. That means conservation will be, water will be conserved. The other thing, this shed net will be able to address the problem of predators. Predators here are birds. So birds will not be able to destroy the crops which are planted here. Why are we addressing for the shady net and not the mosquito net? One, it is because the shady net is, is treated in a way that it can resist that heat and therefore it cannot be destroyed by the direct sunlight. And when we look at the mosquito net, it is, direct, uh, it is destroyed by the sunlight. That's why we advise for the shady net, which is UV treated. That means it has been treated in such a way it cannot be destroyed by direct sunlight. We are fighting against food security. Now, all members of the group, non-members and the community members come together, read, or be trained, and they go and adopt those technologies. Because the technologies are water conserving. Because in this region, we say, this region is arid and semi-arid region. And for now, everybody has been excited 
by the technologies we are promoting. And they come together to learn and go back and adopt the technology for, for themselves. When you look at climate smart agriculture technologies, they help these farmers to become more resilient. When they use these technologies, you avoid issues of total loss, in, in, in total crop loss. So even when the rain is too much, the wind is so much, we're going to train them on issues of corny gardens, which mirror the terrain here in Machakos. We are going to train them on issues of, of shed nets that really protect their vegetables against the strong winds. And even issues of um, biopesticides. When there's strong rain like the El Nino now, there's an emergence of many pests and diseases and we need to get affordable ways of training them to be able to prevent and control these pests using the biopesticides. So as a Sareka, we hope to continue working with this farmer group, supporting them with bundles of climate smart agriculture technologies. Uh, when you look at uh, agriculture technologies, they need to be combined with climate, for instance, climate information as, as a bundle. There is no single technology that is going to address all the challenges that these farmers have this time round. So we are targeting to use a bundle of technologies. We have climate information services that we, sh we, need, we shall bring down to the farmers and contextualize them to their conditions here in Machakos and combine them with the climate smart agriculture technologies that have been produced by CALRO. And through this, we know that the, once the farmers adopt these technologies, then they'll be able to become more resilient and withstand challenges of climate change like the El Nino rains that we are currently experiencing. Oh, our women who, who, who mostly are in the kitchen, they know the way difficult it, it is to get vegetables. So we are encouraging them to use this, this method or this technology because it is cost effective. The Conco Garden can last for 10 years. Without any destruction, it will stay for uh, 10 years, can be there. And you will get your vegetables near your, your house. You will still save time when for going. The time you used to go and get your vegetables will be saved because you have your vegetables near your house. And this brings a lot of... Uh, <laughs> it will bring a lot of love to the family.